In the city of Vancouver, it is illegal to sell cigarettes from a vending machine as it is in the rest of Canada, but there's a new innovation selling crack pipes in vending machines, and the man behind this entrepreneurial project joins us now from our Vancouver studio. Mark Townsend, welcome to the program. It's a pleasure to have you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, before we talk about uh, your, your new vending machine project, tell us a little bit about yourself and your role as the executive director of the Portland Hotel Society. That's a social services agency in some of the poorer parts of Vancouver. What do you it do is. and who do you work with? Well, I work with a nonprofit society that runs housing, dental clinics, medical clinics. We run detox centers, treatment centers. We even actually run a bank. Um, for low-income residents and also uh, what we're really discussing today we run uh, a needle exchange and as part of that needle exchange program we distribute crack pipes now I, I've seen a picture uh, it looks like a vending machine you might have in say a, a mall or an airport for for mm -hmm. soda pop but it it actually has crack pipes and, and if I'm not mistaken they're for sale for 25 cents each am i right T tell me a little bit about the vending machine i mean uh is this a special order thing did you sort of hand make this yourself how, how did the idea come about how many of these machines are they and who paid for them well this was something where there was very little government funding and there was a l uh, not quite enough uh crack pipes being distributed the local authority the vancouver coastal health authority was distributing about sixty thousand a year and uh, there was still a need for some more. So we had to find a way where we could kind of break even and distribute pipes. So we chose a vending machine because it didn't need a staff person, though we have these vending machines in places where staff supervise them. And that was the mechanism we kind of tried to get to, to, to make this actually happen. I mean, the key thing for us is this is about reducing the spread of HIV and AIDS and other communicable diseases. Uh, and that doesn't just affect the addicts, that ultimately affects all of us. Uh, when these diseases spread out of populations, they spread into the populations of people like you or, the, or your viewers. And also, outside of that, it costs a lot of money. An HIV infection can run anywhere between 200000 to maybe $1.4 million. So simple interventions like this help, spread this, help, stop, help spread, stop the spread of disease and also do save money in the long run. They're practical they're kind of evidence-based and they're sort of a pragmatic approach to dealing with problems that cities across this country have. Now I've heard that argument made for handing out clean needles but how does handing out a crack pipe which uh, I mean I've never used one before but I imagine it's just a pipe you put crack in it how would handing out crack pipes stop the spread of, of diseases if there's no blood or injections or things like that if you say the city is already handing out 60,000 crack pipes a year Mm -hmm. What I don't understand the case here. Like, how how is it? What, what's your theory for how these will stop AIDS? Well, there's a, a what happened is our responsibility. You know, we're here on the ground, and we see as our job is doing a good job at the things that come forward. So there was a study a few years ago that so, showed a serious correlation between HIV and AIDS and hepatitis C and crack pipe use. As to the transmission mode, the transmission mode is probably the fact that for the low income residents we're dealing with, because we're not dealing with mayors that use crack or reporters that use crack, we're dealing with very marginalized people. They're using pipes that crack and are very cheap, and then that causes lesions or burns through which uh, you know, bloodborne pathogens are transmitted. But the actual mode is not known, but there is a definite correlation between those who use crack pipes and the spread of uh, HIV and AIDS and hepatitis C. So our response to that is we want people to live for another day we don't want to cost a lot of money downstream where it's, you know, 200,000, 1.4 million to deal with these issues. So having crack pipes is a way of stemming the tide of the, those infections and also bringing people into facilities. These are in places, the Drug Users Resource Center is a place on Cordova Street in Vancouver where there are other facilities and, and, and ways of helping addicts. I mean, we want to see people get off drugs, but also we don't have our head in the sand about the realities on the ground of how these things work and that they're complicated. We would love there to be a simple solution to these situations and they're very difficult. And, it, and it's also good, you know, in a way, the crack pipe vending machine is a way of perhaps trying to move this debate forward and really think about it as we deal with people like Rob Ford, we deal with the death of Seymour Hoffpins. And as we're in the Olympic times, we can see what a kind of 
some of these conservative ministers, unfortunately, I, I don't see this as a party political thing. I just see this as a because uh, I do tend to find that conservatives will be more pragmatic and, and less moralistic on these kind of things, like what's the best thing to do. But some of the things that are coming from the Conservative Party on this really echo Putin's Russia and oh, we're re come Canada's. On. Echo well, Putin's well, Russia. You're going too far here. Let me, instead of speaking. No, 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 I mean, no I'm not. Let, like let in, me in the clear. UN. Can I quote, the, let me quote Stephen Blaney instead of the UN. No, no, let me interrupt you. Uh, just, just, just to be clear, at the moment in the United Nations, Canada is backing Russia in terms of deleting these things from general statements. The rest of the world is shocked okay. let they're me read, backing Russia, let me, which has the let highest... Me, let me read yeah, to on. you uh, uh, Stephen Blaney's statement. Go back to the first slide. I just want to sure. put it on the record what he's saying. I mean, you're, you're comparing him to Vladimir Putin. Now, that's so over the top. Here, let me read. Here's what he said. Let me read it, and you respond to him, okay? He, yeah. uh, this is Stephen Blaney, Minister of Public Safety. He says, we disagree with promoters of this initiative. Drug use damages the health of individuals and the safety of our communities. We believe law enforcement should enforce the law. Next slide. While the NDP and the Liberals would prefer that doctors hand out heroin and needles to those suffering from addiction, this government supports treatment that ends drug use, including limiting access to drug paraphernalia by young people. Okay, I, I mean, don't play the Putin name-calling card. Tell me what's wrong with what Stephen Blaney just said. Well, I mean, all of us uh, know that drugs are dangerous and bad, and we don't want to see people using drugs. But... And this is where, you know, public policy and epidemiology are very important. Disease spreads from one population to another. So when you look at HIV rates in Russia, you look at their policies of not allowing the use of paraphernalia. It's, it's illegal. It's not illegal here, but, I mean, the way that statement sounds, it sounds like we're thinking about that. And uh, that basically spreads disease amongst addicts, and then that spreads disease amongst other people. In terms of getting people off drugs, uh, what upsets me a little bit on this whole issue is we, we're like a little group in Vancouver. We're like a speck of dust, you know, compared to the federal government. But we've had many arguments with them on this issue. And I really think sometimes you just need to beg to differ. And if you are interested in getting people off drugs, and if you are interested in getting people into treatment like that statement says, then why aren't you helping us do that? Uh, literally, a few months ago, the federal government gutted the funding out of the only 40-bed women's treatment center in Vancouver, British Columbia, the Rainier Women's Treatment Center, leaving those women with no treatment options. So I think it comes to that bit where perhaps these are complex issues, and I don't see these as party political issues. It was a very conservative Christian mayor that worked in Vancouver to do an injection site. They are, I think what you need is pragmatic policies that are sensible and make sense and that are cost effective. Mm -hmm. And I think really I would like to see the federal government help with detox and treatment. I would beg them to help with detox and treatment. Mr. Sasser, we're out of time minister. today, but I've enjoyed yeah. having you on the show and I feel like you've well, had you a really good, me. fair shot to make your case. We'll have to have Stephen Blaney on to respond to some of the more dramatic points you said, but I will ask him about that hospital that you mentioned. Thanks for coming the on the show. Women's treatment center. You're a good That'll sport for coming on the Sun News Network. Nice to talk with you today.